remember last time we, we talked about the concepts that have uh, that introduce the idea of turbulence and the core ideas there are that we have uh, unlike laminar flow where you have this boundary layer that develops and is sort of continuous um, in turbulence you have this quickly developing uh, turbulent boundary layer but the turbulent la boundary layer itself is comprised of two things one is this outer layer and then in, with the eddy region and then you have this viscous sublayer that forms and heat transfer and shear stress for turbulence are both dominated by that viscous sublayer so when, we, uh, when it comes time to develop models for this, you know, we want to, to keep that in mind. But I guess the thing we're going to talk about today is the fact that we can still use the same equations that we developed for continuity, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. We can still use all those. Um, they still are valid, but we have to make certain simplifications or certain assumptions uh, to, that will help us modify those equations to apply for turbulent flows. Okay, the, the idea then is that we um, take these, these conservation equations and we apply something uh, that's called Reynolds averaging. So Reynolds averaging is a process in which we simply integrate these equations over some period of time, so these equations here, um, that is much longer than the time scale of turbulence, so there's a little bit of vocabulary. So T int is our interval for integration, how turbulence is the sort of time characteristic or time constant of turbulence. What does that mean? That means if you have like some uh, velocity fluctuation, the fluctuations will tend to, to occur uh, with some periodic uh, frequency. And that frequency is related to this tau turbulence. Um, so, okay, we do that. We integrate this, uh, this e equ equation or the equations. We're left with a set of equations that describe the average flow quantities. Okay, so the goal is we're not actually trying to predict at any moment in time the actual velocity at a, at a position in the turbulent region. We're just trying to predict um, how the average characteristics are going to change. And then if we modify our equations appropriately, we can actually get good turbulence models from that. Um, so, okay, yeah, rather than the highly oscillatory and ex extremely complicated unsteady flow equations, these, we simply end up with averaged ones here, okay? Um, so that's what we're going we're gonna to do today. Uh, let me just oops, unlock this. So again, the idea, just to, to maybe put a sketch with this, would be let's take a point here. This was, we called it B before. So let's take a point and we map out the velocity as a function of time. Um, so this is velocity... Uh, as a function of time. And if we were to uh, map that velocity, again, it would look something like this. We have this, these like kind of oscillations, this randomness to the flow. And we characterize this uh, just to, to kind of put the nomenclature to the drawing, I guess. We would say that this profile itself, right, this, this whole profile is, let's say, u, right? And so that's u is a function of x, y, and t. Um, so I can't really plan to replicate that profile exactly with any model just because of the, the chaotic nature of the flow. But I can say, I can decompose this down to some average. So I'm going to draw an average line here. So this red one is, let's call this u bar. And then the, the oscillations itself, I can call that u prime. Okay, so I'm going to decompose my model of u into u bar plus u prime, and that's where we're going to go with this. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, sorry, let me just recreate that really quickly. I should have done this on one slide. So we can talk about it. So this is time. This is velocity. I'm doing exactly the same thing. There's our flow. So we have our, again, our u bar, u bar, and we have u, u prime. So what we're going to do is say, I'm going to uh, model this by just taking that u bar, subtracting u bar, the mean velocity, as a function of time from that actual profile, and then we're left with this u prime. So u prime itself, if we mapped it out, would actually look something like, like this, right? See if I can 
replicated. It's this is this is u prime here, right? We're just transposing it down to zero. So the thing that's interesting about this, um, which is obvious, is that u prime oscillates about zero. So if I were to say average or integrate u prime for a long enough period of time, I should get zero out of that. So again, obvious, but you'll see how it comes into play. So just to write this out, we're give you some definitions, I guess. We're going to say uh, u bar is a function of x and y. Um, u bar is not a function of time. Right? So it's just a function of x and y. Uh, u bar is uh, equal, in our case, to uh, the time average integral, so 1 over t int of the integral from 0 to t int of u x y time dt. <clears throat> right? We're just saying uh, de a definition of, uh, of the average value, right? time average value. Okay, that's fine. So then um, what else do we need? We need to know uh, what we're saying u is. So we say u, which is a function of x, y, and time, is simply equal to u bar, which is a function of only x and y, plus u prime, which is a function of x, y, and time itself. All right. Um, the other thing to note is, I guess we'll put it up here, is 1 over t int of the integral from 0 to t int of u prime x, y, t, dt is equal to 0. So we get an average value. We get something that's symmetric or um, stationary about 0. And we can then use these properties to help us write out average equations. All right, uh, so let's go to that next step of starting to write this out. Um, so let's start with the continuity equation. So what we're going to do, let's take our continuity equation. We now need to express this in terms of um, our Reynolds averaged equations. So we take continuity, and we're going to say, OK, we have u. We know that u is a function of x, y, and t. Um, but that's actually, we're, we're saying, equal to u bar, which is a function of x and y plus u prime, which is a function of x, y, and t. And we're substituting that in where we see u. We're also doing the same thing for v, right? v can also be written in the same way. We say v x, y, t is equal to v bar x, y plus v prime x, y, t. And that gets substituted in here. So OK, so let's, let's do that. Let me write this out. It becomes, uh, I'll just kind of keep the shorthand here. It'll be partial with respect to x of u bar plus u prime plus partial with respect to y of v bar plus v prime, sorry, v prime, v prime equals 0. Um, so what do we want to do then? Um, we're trying to take the Reynolds average uh, of these equations. So we want to integrate this. Okay? We, want it, we, we want the average value, so we're trying to integrate this. Um, so we can do that, and that becomes 1 over t int of the integral from 0 to t int of this whole thing. Um, so what I would do is just you know, we're, we're integrating this whole thing. To make this a little bit easier, to take advantage of the properties, I'm going to break apart this, each of these integrals using the linearity. So this becomes partial u bar, partial x, plus partial u prime, partial x, and so on. Right? We're just breaking it apart. So doing that, um, we get this. Let me write, so we have a bracket here. So we're breaking all these integrals up. It becomes partial u bar, partial x, uh, dt. So integral again, t int of uh, partial u prime, partial x, dt. Same thing for v. Oops, v bar. 
uh, partial so be partial y dt v prime partial y dt all of that um, yeah so that all has to equal zero I guess so okay so then we go through this um, we can use the properties that we developed so remember we say this integral here the time av the time average integral of these uh, variability terms is zero right so those actually go away um, and we're kind of left with a simplified version of this um, which is let's see uh, yeah let me just show you kind of how I'll just write it out once so we we know how it works and then we can use it so if I were to take the integral of this term so this term would be 1 over t int integral 0 to t int of partial u partial x dt uh, if I evaluate that integral it's just 1 over t int um, let's see the du dx let's see what is this du bar right, du bar u bar is not a function of time right so u bar this this part of the integral can come out so it just becomes an integral from 0 to t int of dt okay so that we're left with uh, partial u partial partial x uh, times the integral is t int okay so then conveniently this cancels with this and we're just left with partial u bar partial x so that first term just simplifies down to that the second term maybe obviously um, this term simplifies down to zero right by our previous definition as does this term okay so then with that we're left with our our restated equation which is partial u bar partial x plus partial v bar v bar partial y is equal to zero okay so this is another one of those cases where you do all this work and you get to this like kind of anticlimactic thing but the the interesting thing is we introduced average velocity a velocity fluctuation and uh, substituted those into the model and it just turned out through doing the math that our equation uh, for Reynolds, aver Reynolds average equation here uh, is just in terms of the average value so in this case in the continuity case the the variability part just goes away right? we don't have to worry about that for continuity that's not the case for the other ones right so this first part while it's boring shows you the process